Okay, so here's a surprisingly rich question um, on the SHSAT. And at first, um, it feels a little overwhelming, but we can deal with this, and we can also think about it intuitively. They tell us that a polyhedron, a many-sided shape, is made of 10 triangular faces. How many vertices does the polyhedron have? So how do you approach a problem like this? Well, without knowing too much about polyhedra, um, or the properties, the wonderful properties of them, we can kind of deduce the answer to this question. All we have to know what faces and vertices are, and edges are. That'll help us understand the problem. So if we have a triangle, and we have 10 triangle faces here, so let's say this is the top view of the shape. We're looking at this shape from above. Um, and that means we have 10 triangles, so from above, we would first see five triangles, right? And they're all the same. Let's say, let's pretend these are all equal here. So this is like our top view of our shape. And imagine these triangles are coming together at an angle to a point. And we'll look at a 3D rendering of this in a moment. Uh, but here are your five triangles. A vertice is a point where um, two lines, two or more lines meet. So here's one vertice here in the middle. Then, I'll use a different color for that, sorry. So here's a vertice. One, two, three, four, five and six. Now, if you have five more triangles right, to connect, they would be going in the exact opposite direction. Let's say these are coming out, these triangles are coming out towards you, and the other side of the shape would be going in to the screen. An exact copy, which means there would be only one more vertice, because all those triangles share these one, two, three, four, five vertices here. The only difference between both sides of the shape are these endpoint vertices right here. So that means that there are six vertices and one more on the other side, which leads us to the answer of F. Right now, let's just take a look at this shape. Okay, so I'm grabbing this um, animation from polyhedra.org, and here we're looking at the shape, and here you can see the five triangles that we first talked about, and they meet together at the center. And if we turn the shape around, you can see the other five triangles on the other side meeting again. And this is the other vertice that's not shared. These other vertices that I said were shared, you can see them right here. They're shared on both sides. We don't count them twice. And this is called, um, if you want to name this thing, a triangular dipyramid. And it has um, 10 triangular faces and 7 vertices. Um, it also has 15 edges, and that's where I think we can go a little bit further with this question so you can understand why there's no need to memorize this sh shape. So just to re recap, I, I kind of imagine how the shape would fit together, and I came up with this here, and you might have to do something similar if you see another type of problem like this. But there's a lot more to this process than just picturing a shape and happening upon the edges and vertices and faces. There's a wonderful connection between them, which is called or referred to as Euler's formula. Here's how you spell it. You can uh, look up more on that. I'm sure we'll be creating more videos on this. Now, Euler is a famous mathematician who came with lots of great ideas and, and really developed mathematics in wonderful ways. Um, the, one of the formulas, and, and the way this works, is that if you say the number of faces of a shape plus the number of vertices minus the edges and polyhedron, right, this is always going to equal the same number. It's always going to be equal to 2. And this is an idea that ties into something called the graph theory. Now this number here doesn't have to be 2, and we're, we're not going to get into it too much here. Other types of wonderful and crazy shapes have different values here. So this is often called the Euler characteristic of a shape. So there, just be aware that there are other shapes that are just these wild shapes um, that have different characteristics other than two. Here, we're dealing with this situation where the faces plus the vertices minus the edges is always equal to two. And this is not something you have to memorize. Um, you can deduce or reach a, this conclusion by constructing a simple shape, like a cube, and, and understanding the ver faces and vertices and edges of that shape to understand um, a pattern here. So that's, that's, again, how I might go about doing this. If I was to say, okay, well, um, how does this work again? What's the connection between faces and edges and vertices of a shape? Because you never know what they're going to ask you, right? They might ask, 
a similar type of question here, but they might change it and ask you for edges, or they might um, ask for a more general kind of um, solution. So you have to understand a little bit more than just this scenario. So with a cube, what happens? Well, we have faces, we have edges, we have vertices. We have one, two, three, four, and then another one, two, three, four vertices. So that's eight vertices and a cube of course like a, like a number die has six faces and how many edges does it have? Well it has the four on the top one two three four four on the bottom and then four on the lateral surface right here and we don't need those so let's clear that off so that's twelve edges so eight vertices six faces and twelve edges now is there a connection between these numbers? I, I think this is where to make a little bit of a leap um, and you can look at them in different ways, but if you try it with this formula here, you can see that this works. You take six faces, you add it to the eight vertices, and you subtract the number of edges, and you get two. So this works. But why does it always stay at two in these types of simple um, shapes here? Well, let's try something out. What if I was to add an edge over here? What happens to the shape? Okay, well, I changed the formula now, right? We have faces plus vertices minus edges, so F plus V minus E. So I, I added another edge in, and you might think, oh, well, that'll change the shape, right? Because now instead of 12 edges, we have 13. So we're taking a more, we're taking one more away. We were taking 12 away before, now we're taking 13. So shouldn't you get a different number? No, you'll get two again. Why? Well, when you add an edge like this, you create a, a surface with two faces. So now we have this one face right here and one down there as well. So we created an edge, but in doing so we also created an extra face. So we're taking one more edge away, we're starting with one more face. So instead of six faces we have seven. And if you have seven plus eight, and we haven't touched the vertices here, um, we have fifteen minus thirteen is still two. There's this great property here. And you say, well, well can't you just add another vertice somewhere? And won't that change things? Well, if I add this vertice here, sure, I add another vertice, but I then cut a line into two edges. So I have two more, two edges here, I have another edge. So if I add another vertice, I also take away another edge in this formula. So it stays balanced at two. Um, how does this help you in this problem? Well, here you know the number of faces, and that gives you a hint to the number of vertices and edges. You know that in these polyhedron, there's a balance. Euler's formula tells us the faces plus the vertices minus the edges is always 2. So in this case, we have, I'll write it right here, 10 faces, and we already said we have, excuse me, 17 vert uh, 7 vertices. So if we subtract the number of edges, we should get 2. 10 plus 7 is 17, minus 15 equals 2, so the edges here would equal 15. So we can go further with this. And that's just some of the background here. Uh, I hope I didn't ramble too much. Thanks.